G'day, I'm Barry Ashenhurst, this is Zena. Every year I go to Tassie, I've been doing that for the last, gee, must be 15 or 16 years, to spend some time with a couple of friends of mine, Dennis and Barbara Harding. Dennis is a landscape photographer, a very good one. And together, he and Barbara have run a successful publishing business centred on the tourism industry. Well, I made a film about Dennis this year for a few reasons. Number one, he's a mate of mine and I reckon he deserves more publicity than he gets. Number two, I owe Dennis and Barbara a lot of food and a lot of grog. Number three, I wanted you to know what it's like to be a landscape photographer in a tough little place like Tassie. Yeah, that was pretty good, wasn't it? When I was younger, you know, there was no thoughts of going hiking or anything like that. But um, as I got older and um, got more interested in photography, I decided to um, take some hikes into the mountains. And once I got into the mountains, I then saw that it was quite a radically different place than what I expected. Different plants, the rocks, the trees, a lot wilder than I imagined. I sort of was a natural um, transition from taking just everyday landscapes of anything in the paddocks or farmland or stuff like that to more wilder uh, scenery. I think because it was so unique. The only thing I can remember about being taught at school was um, the mention of Southwest Tasmania was a wilderness area. No one went there. Not even the Aborigines went there. So, you know, when you found yourself gradually going to these sorts of areas, then what happened was that you, you, you saw them uh, in a, a strange light, you know. It was sort of like, uh, wow, this is just incredible, you know. I've always been a bit of a quality freak. When you take a photograph, it's got to be sharp. So it was just a gradual, natural dip to go to medium format and then go to large format. Medium format was very high quality, but I had problems with depth of field and focusing and getting really sharp photographs. Once I learned about the movements that you could make, there was no going back. I didn't worry about not having as many shots to take. In fact, there were lots of advantage, advantages with it that you could be very selective. You could look at the subject in front of you and say, this isn't worth photographing. It really tested your mind. Today, you get the digital camera out if you think it's a decent photograph and you take the photograph. But if you had a large format camera with only a few sheets of film, you'd go, that one's not good enough. There's quite a few difficulties in being a wilderness photographer. I'd say probably river crossings, um, creek crossings, is one of the most dangerous things. And the weather. The weather in Tasmania can be very unpredictable and it can be, there can be extremes, uh, cold extremes. Um, you, we've got this gigantic ocean out to the west coast and the moisture builds up and weather can turn really nasty. They almost, the mountains almost generate their own weather pattern. Extremes, lows come in very, very quickly. It can be a matter of minutes and a uh, low can be seen off the, off the coast and you can be in the mountains and the next half an hour, an hour it can be there and it can be quite extremely cold. Uh, blizzard conditions, hail, any time of the year. I've had many days in the southwest where it hasn't been terribly comfortable. <laughs> um, I remember one particular trip in the Western Arthurs where I had I spent 24 hours in a one-man tent. My tent was quite small. I couldn't sit up in it. 
you had to go in feet first to get into the tent and that was one of the cost saving measures in carrying all the gear you know you had to make cut your toothbrush in half things like that you know <laughs> I've stopped doing that now, but I have a full-length toothbrush now, but that was one of the things I did, I remember. Uh, it was quite ridiculous, but um, 24 hours in the tent, I climbed Moraine A, walked for about four or five hours to Square Lake, and then spent another 36 hours in this horrible small tent, watching the hail go up and down outside. <laughs> and I remember getting a little bit depressed and I started making notes about, this is before I did my first book and I made some notes and when I got home and I read them, I tore them up and threw them in the rubbish bin. <laughs> it was quite, yeah, quite challenging. Digital photography has been something that I never thought would happen. When we were using film, we evolved with film, we knew how it worked, we knew all the cameras, we knew all the settings and all the rest of it. Then all of a sudden digital came. We took it as a joke to begin with, but then within a very short period of time it, it evolved so quickly and it became a really, really good tool for photography. But at the same time, the masses became photographers. So instead of there being isolated few as there were for 100 years. Being a general photographer or a local photographer that could make a living out of it, we've now got these thousands and thousands of photographers and they're all really good. And the reason they're good is because the technology gives them all the information. Uh, when, you, when you had film, you had no um, idea of what sort of result you were getting. Uh, only through a lot of experience did you have some sort of indication. You, you had this mental idea that if you exposed it this way or did this, or you'd get this sort of result. When you photograph a waterfall and you want a bit of water movement, you've got to set it at a slower shutter speed. But what shutter speed do you set it at? It depends how fast the water is. It depends how fast the water's moving. It depends how far the water is away from you. There's all these factors, you can't determine that if you didn't have any LCD screen that would show you a photograph on the back of the camera. You can take photographs of the stars. You can see what it's doing. The camera's telling you all these things. Uh, you can set it on D for Dighead and, you know, <laughs> it's, it's, it's a whole new ball game. I love to photograph from the coastline, particularly as I've got older, because it's um, this beautiful colour in Tasmania, the rocks, the lichen on the rocks, the east coast is, the water is, turquoise water is absolutely amazing. It just does something to you, you can just sit there and relax and soak it up. The sunrises on the east coast of Tasmania are amazing. Rainforest is very challenging. There's lots of chaos, lots of trees that have fallen down. It's the hardest place to get compositions. You have to really walk slow. You can't tear through there and hope to find something. You've got to walk around in circles and uh, try not to get lost because you're going to go in different directions and. You know, unless you're keeping really good tabs on where you are, you can come a grief really quickly. Photography has been uh, fantastic for me. Um, it's a passion, I think. I think that's the best way to describe it, more than an occupation. And when you've got a passion for something, you don't need the same rewards as you would if it was another job. You, you're getting rewards just by being out there and having a go. There's lots of other things that are involved in it. People work just for money. But when 
your life is photography, if you're not making a lot of money out of it, you'll still keep doing it because that's what you want to do.